Okay, uh, in this last chapter, we'll take a look at concrete for 3D printing. So let's talk about concrete for 3D printing. We have already talked a lot about rheology earlier, and you saw how that rheology was applied to the design of self-compacting concrete. Now, in this context, 3D printed concrete is also a special rheology controlled concrete where a lot of the functionalities of this material deal with the fundamental rheological characteristics. So that is why your understanding of rheology will also make a difference with respect to understanding the content for 3D printing. Now in IIT Madras, we created this imprint or IIT Madras printability lab uh, which has IITM and Twasta as one of the partners. Twasta is a 3D printing manufacturer or 3D printing uh, company which makes their own 3D printers and also executes projects with concrete 3D printing. So they originally started off uh, as a startup from 2016 IIT Madras graduates, none of them are civil engineers by the way. Uh, they set up this uh, company in Bangalore and uh, initially they were involved with uh, 3D printing as it is applied to the manufacturing industry. Uh, and for the product industry, essentially plastics and metal. And later on, they started looking at concrete because of uh, a workshop that we had conducted here in 2016, where we invited uh, top experts from the world talking about 3D printing. We created a working group from this and then from then on, we have really come quite some distance with Twasta. Uh, so Twasta today is uh, probably one of the leading uh, 3D printing companies, of course, in India. And if possible, we can think about that in the world also because of the speed at which they have come up to this level. Uh, they are, their construction arm is of course based in Chennai. So if you, any of you ever have interest to actually visit their factory, that can also be arranged sometime. Right. So 3D printing is one of the additive manufacturing techniques. What we are typically used to is subtractive manufacturing. We take a large component, we mill it, we cut it and so on and build the component or part that we desire. This is basically from a manufacturing technology segment, right? You would have done workshop in your college, right? Or even carpentry, you take a large block of wood, then you cut it to the right size, right? You, in fitting in workshop, you would have taken a large block of metal, done cutting and filing and grinding and everything and then made it to the right size. That is called subtractive manufacturing. But additive manufacturing is the other way. You create a 3D image of the object and then you deposit material to create the object so that you can minimize the wastage and digitize the process to control the process more digitally. Okay. So this is a simple example of subtractive and additive manufacturing. So here of course milling is being done of a large metal piece and here additive manufacturing of plastic is getting done. So you have layers which are getting deposited. Plastic is quite easy in this uh, way because when you heat plastic it flows, when it comes, cools down to room temperature, it sets and hardens. So it is quite easy to do 3D printing with plastic. So there are various different types of additive manufacturing technologies. Of course, we not go through entirely everything, but just for your understanding, there is a lot of ways in which you can actually do additive manufacturing. Uh, this is photopolymerization, uh, one of the leading research segments today is stereolithography. Uh, there are much more sophisticated techniques with additive manufacturing available in the uh, manufacturing electronics industry. Today, even medical uh, 3D printing is being done. Material extrusion, this is what we are mostly concerned with. Okay. Uh, in the case of metal or in the case of uh, plastics, it used to be called fused deposition modeling. But in concrete, we just call it concrete extrusion 3D printing. There is powder bed fusion techniques sheet lamination techniques, material jetting techniques. So for instance, here what is done is the ink or the binder is basically jetted onto a bed which contains the aggregate, right? And that basically ensures that the aggregate can be encapsulated in the correct location. Then you have binder jetting, which is more or less the same. And then direct energy deposition like electron beam additive manufacturing and laser engineering. So many technologies today are available in this segment of manufacturing. The idea of digitization of construction is to see a way in which we can employ manufacturing techniques in construction. Why? Because construction as such does not have the kind of productivity that manufacturing does. 
if we start digitizing construction, it can reach levels of productivity equivalent to manufacturing. Your precast concreting is basically one way of digitizing or making construction more like a manufacturing scheme. Okay, but again, in all these cases, whether it's 3D printing or precast, if it's done in a factory, there's some assembly involved on site which involves skilled people to do it, right? So skill levels have to be upgraded when you start dealing with new technologies. We cannot work the way that we have been working before. So concrete 3D printing is a layer by layer deposition in the required shape. You can see the printer basically depositing the material, right? And uh, here what you are essentially ending up with is without form work, you are creating shapes that are complicated, shapes that cannot be achieved easily because for normal concrete, if you have to prepare form work specifically for each shape, it is going to be an expensive affair. And if you are not going to be re able to reuse the form work, then economically it cannot be justified easily. So, 3D printing can be made use of wherever you need some flexibility in your design. Okay? So, again with respect to 3D printing itself, you can either fabricate structural components like walls or columns or beams or whatever and support components. Support components are basically those which are like let us say you are printing a form work, right? you are printing a form work or you are printing some uh, or you are putting together a material which can act as a base or a support or a mold for other concrete that you are going to be placing on top of it. Okay? Now, in terms of the technique of printing, you have either material extrusion or binder jetting as popular choices with respect to printing structural components. As we will see later, uh, binder jetting is not something that can be done for large scale components. It is more suitable whenever you are able to, whenever you need to produce something very intricate but at a much smaller scale. Okay? Now extrusion based 3D printing is what is commonly done. Here extrusion based printing can involve cementitious mixes, not cementitious, cementitious mixes. Geopolymer concrete mixes could also be used for 3D printing with material extrusion. Mud or clay can also be 3D printed, right? Thermoplastics and metals, of course, are being done already. We are not uh, dealing with those as far as construction is concerned, but that can also be done. Right? There are different types of printing machines which can actually execute these prints. The machine type could be a gantry. Gantry means you have a frame and your machine basically is able to move along the portal right? and that is basically a gantry. You can have a swing arm printer where you have a centralized pole and then the arm basically swings around and prints. The delta is basically a frame which is not rectangular, it is basically a triangular frame. Okay? You have a six axis arm, mobile six axis arm or boom arm, various different types of machines can be used and printing also can be done either on site or off site. On site means you bring the printer to the site and do the printing. Off site is like a precast operation. You print in a factory, then you take it to the site. There are several companies, I am not going to go through each and every name here, but I am sure that when you look at the videos that are available on YouTube, you will find most of these companies having their videos on there. There is some news or the other which keeps coming out about many of these different companies, about what they have accomplished with 3D printing. Uh, sometimes they print very fast, sometimes they print components that are previously unseen and so on. So there is a lot of uh, examples on YouTube where you can actually see the uh, videos of printing. So what is involved in 3D printing process? One is obviously to create the model using CAD software, 3D modeling software. Revit can also be used to do a 3D model. But the problem next is how do you convert this 3D model into a two dimensional print? So, when you give a uh, regular print command on your computer, that is only two dimensional, all the basically ink gets deposited in the shapes that you are having your letters in, right, on, on top of the paper, like an inkjet printer basically sprays the ink. Okay? So, a laser printer has a slightly different technology, but the idea is the same that you are putting ink where it needs to be put. Okay? With respect to 3D printing, this design that you have in a 3D printed model has to be sliced to convert that into 2D. 
Now, if you think of this as a reverse of your computerized axial tomography scan, what is done in CAT scan? Anybody has ever got MRI or a CAT scan done before? Yeah, well, what is done there? <laughs> what does that machine do? Yeah, what does it scan? So, you know about x ray, right? What does it, what happens in x ray scanning? Suppose you have a fracture in your arm, you put the x ray source on this side, you have a film on the other side, same radiation shielding, right? The segments in your hand which are denser will shield more x rays. What is denser in your arm? The bones are denser, right? So, they will shield more x rays. And this image will get captured on the photographic film on the other side. Now, when you do a CAT scan of the same arm, you are taking images completely around the arm. So, 360 degree images are being taken, right. You take 360 degrees images and then you have an algorithm that puts these images together and recreates a three dimensional shape. Okay, that is what is a computerized axial tomography scan. So, there you are having slices which are put together to make a 3D object. Here you want to do just the opposite. From a 3D object, you want to slice it in such a way that it is possible to execute a print, right. So, the CAD model is broken into layers and converted into what we call as STL or AMF files, which are then executable by a printer. Now, these conversion, uh, the slicing software is actually freely available on the internet. Uh, it is a shared code, it is an open source code. So, you can actually get this freely from uh, from several groups that are working around the world. Okay. Or in this case, Twasta of course, created their own, but then this can be done uh, by most people who are savvy with how these things are done. The next thing is obviously, you tell the printer to print in those layers. So, let us say you had a box, right? if you want to print a box. then you will be break it, breaking it up into slices and then asking the printer to execute the box. So, what it will do? It will just print uh, rectangles or squares one on top of the other until you have the complete box, right. So, this involves file transfer, positioning and printing of the design layer by layer. So, essentially your printer is going to wherever the material is required, extruding the material and placing it there. And we know that in concrete, we need to do post processing like curing or if we want a specific surface finish, we have to do the finishing also. Curing and finishing are absolutely important with respect to concrete and then you get your final product, right. 